Greg. And I'm Billy. Together with the Fuji guys. Fuji guys. Hey, this quick video is on optical zoom. It's a great feature to have on your camera. Uh, just historically, optical zooms kind of became popular in the early 70s on 35 millimeter cameras, and they grew in popularity uh, from that point on. Not only did they grow in popularity, Billy, but they grew in quality and versatility. Um, I've actually been around selling cameras that long, so I, I've, I've literally lived the history of, uh, of an optical zoom lens out there. And I can tell you through computer designing and the smaller nature of the sensors on, on digital cameras, etc., uh, the quality and the compact nature of the optical zoom has just expanded so rapidly over the last several years. Absolutely, I mean, it's, it amazes me. So, I know what an optical zoom is. You know what an optical zoom is. And most of our customers have heard things like three times, ten times, or whatever. But what's the real benefit, just in a nutshell, of having an optical zoom lens on your camera? Just getting closer. That's getting it. closer. Okay. You know, having a camera and not having to physically walk somewhere to get a close-up shot because, uh, you know, you can't sometimes, right. you know, whether you're at a zoo. Or, or you'll like miss that. the shot. By the time you try and get close, I That's know right. that taking pictures of nature, for example, every time I try to get closer to a bird, it'll fly away. Or, or you That's know, sitting, standing back further and getting uh, natural, candid photos of your young children. That's right. That's another great use Perfect for long zoom or, or, or sports photography. So these are all things where, as Billy said, it's either inconvenient or impossible to get closer to your subject, the optical zoom lens does that for you. Okay, great. So now that we know the, the benefit and the history of an optical zoom, let's explain some of the numbers. Um, I hear things like 35 to 105. I hear things 28 to 280. All these things, and these would be known as the zoom range. And I just want to explain where those numbers are derived from. Again, as I mentioned earlier, the zoom lens really became popular with 35 millimeter film cameras. And the numbers that people got used to were referred to the focal lengths uh, of those lenses. So when we talk about focal lengths on a digital camera, we actually convert them to a 35 millimeter equivalent. So without worrying so much about what that number means and why did they convert it to 35 millimeter equivalency, uh, I just want to focus on a couple of basics when you hear these numbers, 35, 100, 200. When you think of a 50 millimeter lens, what you should think of is a lens that sees roughly the same perspective as the human eyesight. So if I look through a 50 millimeter lens, something looks just as far away as it does in real life to me, okay? So if I know that and the number gets smaller, let's say I have a 28 millimeter lens. Well, what happens when the number gets smaller than 50 is that the, the angle of view widens and my subjects get pushed further away. Hence so, wide angle lenses. So wide angle lens. So anything lower than 50 millimeter equivalent is technically getting wider and wider and wider as you go lower and lower and lower. Now conversely to that, when I have a 50 millimeter lens, again, that starts with my normal naked eye perspective. When I start going higher than that, I get narrower and my subject gets compressed or brings in closer to me. And that's referred to as a telephoto. So really, um, when we talk about 35 millimeter equivalents, just remember everything below 50, wide angle. Everything above 50, telephoto. The extent of that number would just say, well, how wide angle is it or how telephoto is it? The other numbers that we have to think about with zooms all the time is you hear three times, five times, ten times, eighteen times. And that's that's what I'm used to, Greg, is yeah. you know, when I when I visit a, a store that sells cameras. So tell all me I about what's three times, 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 ten times, five any, times. Five times. Well, for me, I mean, uh, if we equate that back to uh, to 35 millimeter equivalency, I, I would uh -huh. assume that a three time zoom camera like this one here, it, you know, ranges from 35 to 105, uh -huh. and if I guess I divide that number, 105 by 35, I would get three, and right. hence three times, exactly. and that's where they get that number. So whatever the, the most telephoto setting is on the lens, divide it, divide it rather by the most wide, wide angle is. setting, and that will get you your three times, five times, ten times number, and essentially a three times zoom lens whether it's by the press of a button or the turn of a collar or something, is bringing your subject in closer by three times than the widest setting. Okay, so just quickly show us some examples of the cameras that have the different types of zoom, and we'll bring up some sample pictures here to give you reference as to 
how much closer that subject can be brought in depending on how strong of a zoom you've Absolutely. got. Absolutely. Okay, if Billy? we take a look at one of these uh, three time zoom cameras that we have, here's a standard shot. Mm -hmm. You know, that's shot at the, the, the widest angle possible right. on the camera. And here's its equivalent at three time zoom. Okay, so I'm bringing the subject in, I'm going to say a little bit closer with a three times. Yes. So let's talk about something more powerful then. Okay, we have another camera that can range up to uh, 10 times zoom. So in okay. this particular camera, it goes to about 270 millimeters equivalent to a 35. All right, and let's see a and picture with that. Wow, take a look now at that's that. a big difference. Absolutely. That's a big difference. Okay, and anything more powerful? And then we us. talk about the ultra zoom now. When we talked about long zooms, here's ultra zoom. That's past 10 times. In fact, it's 18 times zoom. I think it goes to, what, 504 millimeters? Equivalency. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. I mean, we take a look at that now versus a standard wow. wide Now that's shot. like, that's National Geographic type stuff, right. bringing something in close. So you can take pictures of birds and trees or, or kids on the soccer field that are far away with an 18 times zoom. So great for sports and nature. Um, I would say the benefit of this 10 time zoom here is that it's extremely compact and 10 times is a very strong zoom as well. So uh, there's no doubt that I appreciate the uh, versatility of having a good quality optical zoom on my camera. And, you know, I might be considered an advanced photographer or something like that, but one thing I can tell you as someone who gives advice to a lot of people is that uh, there's nothing like a good optical zoom range on your camera to add versatility and variety to the types of pictures that you're able to capture with that camera. So don't skimp on your zoom. Get, get a good zoom. Uh, until next video, I'm Greg. And I'm Billy. And together with the Fuji, Fuji guys. guys.